This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner with my co-hosts Emily Campagno and Kaylee McEnany, also joining us today, host of Kennedy Saves the World podcast, Kennedy herself saving us all. <laughs> Former Wisconsin congressman and co-host of The Bottom Line on Fox Business, Sean Duffy, is here. Let's get it started. Breaking news this hour, former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy now says he will be leaving Congress at the end of the year. McCarthy's shocking announcement comes after his historic removal from the speakership in October, and his departure is set to make Republicans' already slim majority even tighter heading into 2024. The former speaker announced his decision in a new Wall Street Journal op-ed titled, I'm leaving the House, but not the fight. And here's a piece of it. Despite the best attempts by my special interest groups and the news media to divide us, I have seen the goodness of the American people. They are what will ultimately uphold the enduring values of our great nation. We all have a role to play in that effort. I never could have imagined the journey when I first threw my hat in the ring. I go knowing I left it all on the field and as always with, my, with a smile on my face. And looking back, I wouldn't have had it any other way, only in America. He says, Sean. So you mentioned the goodness of the American people. Kevin McCarthy is was a members leader. He had been to, I think, virtually every district in America. He knows the country, knows the members, knows the issues of their districts. Um, he served as the whip. He served as a leader. And then he served as uh, as the speaker. I, I just I found him as a, a, a happy warrior. And here's what's interesting, Harris. Most leaders that lose power. You would see two days later, they're going to do a speech and say, I'm going to leave the institution. I'm going to go back home. Kevin McCarthy is going to have stayed for several months because he cared about the transition to Speaker Johnson. He wanted to make sure it was smooth. He had institutional knowledge that he could offer. I just think it shows how much he cares about the country and the institution and actually elected Republicans. A lot of minorities, a lot of women were elected under Kevin McCarthy. Can you replace his seat with a Republican in huh. an election? 100 percent. That's that's a Republican seat in California, one of the most Republican seats in the state. So, yes, Republicans will keep it. The problem, though, is in your read, you're now one less. Bill Johnson from Ohio is leaving. Uh, they kicked out George Santos. Now Kevin McCarthy is leaving. A, a thin majority is now that much thinner, which makes you think about how stupid Republicans have been of Ooh, going after their own members. That's a strong word. It well, is. I'll tell you another area where they fall short. Nobody fundraises like Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> no, he's a great fundraiser. There's no doubt about it. And to underscore Kevin's point, I mean, Republicans, it's almost laughable, right? Because you can't get a more unpopular president than Joe Biden. You, you really can, other than maybe Jimmy Carter. But there was no red wave, so that crashed and burned. So we're left with, it was like a five-seat majority, went to four, three. Well, now Kevin McCarthy leaves. We're down to a two-seat majority as Republicans, two seats away from Hakeem Jeffries taking the gavel. I mean, that's how thin this majority is. Yes, we will likely win back these seats, but as a Republican messenger sitting here, as former press secretary, former Republican campaign, you know, you think about how do you deliver voters a choice? You never want it to be a referendum on your candidate. It strikes me there are two ways. One, the nominee of the Republican Party. At this point, it looks like President Trump can drive a choice. Here's my agenda, here's Biden's. But number two, mm -hmm. the House majority can pass things, can say this is our proactive agenda in a Newt Gingrich style. This is our contract with America. I believe Mike Johnson's the man for the moment. I believe he can do it with a two-seat majority. Wow, that's a tall task. All right, real quickly, just to follow up for you, because I think it's important to look at the slim majority in the Senate, too, and, and how excited Democrats have been to anoint Kamala Harris with the, you know, with the crown of she's had more, you know, decision breaks as a vice president than anybody else in history. I mean, it is tight there, too. It's tight there, and it looks really good for Republicans. And I say it looks really good because the polling looked good in the midterms, but Jim Justice in West Virginia, you have Manchin retiring, John Tester out in Montana, a very vulnerable, a good map for Republicans, but we need victories. We need wins on the board, and we haven't seen that in quite some time. So, Kennedy, talk to me about his departure and how it fits in politically. I mean, do you think there are people who look at that and say, well, they kind of got the same thing with Johnson, at least on keeping the government open, or did we get something different? No, I think you got something completely different, and I think what you have is someone who's showing the growing pains that the GOP is exhibiting right now. It's the same thing in the Democrat Party. Like, there are some real fractures in the Democrat Party, but it is not unique to them. And I agree with Kaylee's assessment that Johnson is the man of the moment. I don't think he's a long-term person who's going to be inhabiting the speakership for no. years. No, I, I don't. I, I think he's basically a placeholder until the caucus figures out what their party really stands for. Because, you know, 
I, I, I would be very curious to hear this from you. Is there a group of people who could sit down and craft a very necessary contract with America right now? Because it feels like, you know, if you had even a slim majority of Republicans in the caucus put something down, there would be a number of them willing to blow it up for ideological reasons or just attention. No, listen, so uh, it would be great if you could have a contract with America. That's not going to come. But again, you have a party, a Republican party, and I hate to bash them right now, but they were elected to fight Democrats, to fight the communists yes. in the Democrat Party, as opposed to fighting themselves. They spent weeks on Kevin McCarthy. They, they spent a week on George Santos. You don't, you don't have that many weeks in a legislative session, and, and especially when you're coming into a presidential election, it's that much shorter. You start to lose focus when you get into April and May because the presidential cycle takes over. So you run out of time, and you're focused on the wrong things. Not a contract. You're focused on your own members, your own internal fight. That's not why you're elected by the Republican base. So, so can I ask you then, so now that we know the majority is down from 220 to 213, and in his farewell address letter, this former speaker said, um, essentially, you know, we all know that the more government you have, the weaker America gets, the worse America gets. So he said, I'm now going to recruit America's best and brightest, essentially, for office. Um, and so to me, that sort of indicated that he feels, you know, where we need the Band-Aids is no longer the legislature, even though that majority is so slim and therefore so terrifying. It seems to me that, to your point, he's out there recruiting to get a cohesive GOP because that's what we're lacking. Mm. Do you feel he'll succeed at that? Do you feel that's where we need his prowess? Will it work? So a, th so a three, four, five-seat majority is not not a governing majority. So Kevin McCarthy sees that you need a larger majority. So he's going right. to go recruit other members that are going to come into the party, but also be people who, listen, you have to have compromise, right? It, you can never have it be my, my way or the highway. Mm. Politics don't work that way. Our marriages don't work that way. Sometimes in my house, it's a little more Rachel <laughs> than me, but you, can, you, can, you, you have to compromise. And again, so you need a bigger majority to, to, to do that. So and let Kevin's me ask you, because we know where the two, you know, top vote getters would be today, would be Biden and Trump. And we know that there are at least 50% of people in their own parties who don't want it to be, you know, 50% percent of Democrats don't want anybody but Biden, and then 50 to a little bit more than that for, for people in, in Trump's party, anybody but Trump. What do you do with those people, though, if it's neither one of those men? Like, where does the party go? Is it still Trump's party? Is it Biden's party? Well, I think the party, so, so in the congressional seats and in the, and in the Senate races, the, the, the candidates have to separate themselves from the top of the ticket, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm not running with Trump or I'm not running with Biden. I'm going to run my own race. And you can, you can analyze the presidential candidates the way you see fit, but I want you to analyze me and, and my opponent um, on the issues that I'm running on and the message that I have. And sometimes in a presidential cycle, and especially with a Biden and a, and a Trump at the top of the ticket, it's really hard to get that separation. Yeah. But all candidates, unless, unless you know, Donald Trump is pulling uh, you know, up by you know, 30 points in your district or Biden is up by 30 points, you want to run with them. But most of the time, that's not the case because these districts and states are divided. You yeah. got to separate yourself. One, so, quick, sorry. I, I'm sorry. The, the reason I ask that question is because with outgoing House Speaker, you say that Kevin McCarthy is going to help people win in districts. And I'm just wondering what that looks like. Does it become a different party in that sense? So, well, I think it becomes, I'm sorry, it, be, it becomes uh, you're recruiting really good candidates. You're trying to help the best candidates win the primary. And then and you, I think you mentioned this. He's a, a profound fundraiser mm. and raising money yes. to help the candidates that he uh, he he uh, gets on the ballot. I, I just want to say quickly about Mike Johnson. Um, when I spoke with him, you know, he said to me, I was drawing up plans for whoever the next House Speaker would be. <laughs> he has a vision and he found himself in a position. He's very humble. He has a lot of political capital, as you probably know, with the Republican caucus. I do believe he is someone who can lead this party forward, um, and he has a plan. So I wouldn't underestimate Mike Johnson for all the good Kevin McCarthy did. He has a great successor. Do you agree with Kennedy that he may not stick for the long term, though? I, I think he could stick for the long term. I was very impressed by him. Oh, shots fired! With, with the, the mind. <laughs> shots fired. It was more of, do you think he wants the job long term? It wasn't shots fired. I, isn't Sean Duffy happier now that he's left Congress? I've gotten less gray. I think. In the, in, Almost in everybody I talk to is happier once they move. <laughs> I don't know. I've never held office. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-host Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.